Hey, welcome everybody. I'm glad you're here um, watching this video and Melissa, thank you for joining me today. Um, let me introduce my special guest for this interview, this expert interview. This is Melissa Crimmins. Melissa is an industry recruiter and is doing a lot of really cool things over there. So Melissa, why don't you introduce yourself to our viewers and tell them who you are, what you do and uh, who you serve. Okay, great. Thanks, Sid. My company is builthive.io and we help talent in the built environment find work, whether that's full-time employment in a sales or business development uh, leadership position or as a deployed resource, which we refer to in our business as the gig or contract resource sector. And we help designers, project managers, marketeers find projects. And they're deployed through us as part of our team as experts, um, consultants okay. in their field. Okay. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. We're going to dive into, I think, both sides of that conversation while we're here together. So, I mean, Melissa, as you know, we've been talking about it before we got on here. I mean, our world is upside down right now. I mean, this whole pandemic thing has impacted every individual, every company, every manufacturer, every dealer. And I think it's really, really starting to hit our industry at this very minute. And we know there have been layoffs. We hear there are more coming. There have been furloughs. And, you know, there have even been some closures, which is all very unfortunate. But what I know, and I, I know what you know, factually, is there's a lot of really talented, smart, creative people out there that are now unfortunately looking for work, some of them in the first time in five, 10, even 15 years. Right. So, and a lot of times they work for the same company. And so what I'd like to, to start with today is kind of your thoughts on the current state of hiring in our industry and what are you seeing from your customers out there? Mm. Uh, that's the same thing that you're seeing. And that is that <clears throat> things were going at, moving in fifth gear and now we've downshifted mm. back to really first gear. And so things have taken a, what I'll call a, a, um, a very stiff pause. Okay. So what I'm seeing is that people that were in active search on the talent side are having to re adjust the way they were approaching positions that they were pursuing. Mm -hmm. And, I think that you've brought up a lot of good points about how do they do that if they've been in the same role for a long time? How do they shift their experience so that they can present themselves for a position they might not have considered? Sure, absolutely. Well, and the key there, the word that I like is pivot. You know, we all have to think about pivoting and what does pivoting mean, especially right now. So, Melissa, I got a few questions um, for you. We kind of run down and we'll just see how our conversation takes us and where it takes us, okay? Yes. So, what tips would you give our community about communicating to either recruiters or potential employers or just other people in general that they were laid off, let go, downsized, whatever, during a crisis slash pandemic? What kind of tips would you give them? I think the first thing is a really simple tip, and that is be positive. Mm. It's really the toughest uh, component is to maintain a positive attitude. We will get through this. Mm -hmm. um, the other is a word that I use often. You've heard me use it before, and that is figure out your focus forward. What does that mean? What does that look like for you? And create a plan. The plan will be adjusted, but in that plan, what is your focus for your professional pivot? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? And then I think the third is be open because an opportunity is going to come to you in a place mm -hmm. that you might not have expected. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to need to be a little open, a little more flexible, a little more mm -hmm. adjustable, whether you've been in the industry two years or 32 years, mm -hmm. I think you need to be open. Okay. So just for everybody watching, Melissa and I have known each other for a really long time. We used to work together and we've been collaborating together um, for many, many years. And so Melissa knows me pretty well. And I, what I'm, the reason I preface that, what I'm about to say is I just love what you just said because you are speaking to me in a big way, which the first thing you said, which is me being a coach, just totally hits home with me. Be positive. 
be positive. And the way I like to think about that too is like, what do you have to be grateful for today? Because every day you got something positive to be grateful for, right? Something that you could look inside and say, I'm grateful for this. So mindset is so important in this. Yeah. It is unfortunate that you're dealing with this. It's unfortunate, whoever you are listening to this, it's unfortunate that you're dealing with this. But everybody in the world is dealing with it. And let me rephrase that. Everybody in the world is dealing with this in some way, in some way and you're not alone. Mm -hmm. So be positive. You control your mindset, so be positive. For sure. Admit, you mentioned three things that also resonate with me. Um, forward focus. Have a vision for where you want to go and what you want to do. Mm -hmm. But be flexible enough, right? Be flexible enough to adjust it. But be forward focused. Create a plan and what you're going to do. And then be open to the ideas that are presented to you. Because, guys, there's going to be ideas presented to you. People are going to come to you with ideas and opportunities that maybe you hadn't thought of and you got to be open-minded to it. So mm -hmm. most thank you for preaching the gospel of coaching yeah. right there, because that's exactly what you did. <laughs> Appreciate that okay. very, very much. We are okay. aligned. So what tips would, so what kind of tips would you give to somebody to help them get noticed by recruiters or mm -hmm. potential employers or other people? What would they, what do people need to do to be noticed? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a great one. I, this is easy to come prepared, be prepared, do some homework and have that sense of what that core focus is when mm -hmm. you come to them. Mm -hmm. And I think the third is again, be open-minded, but listen, oftentimes on the talent side, what happens is we love it when we receive referrals and people come to us and they say, what do you have for me? Who's looking for people and what you're working on? Will they want me? And that's certainly an interesting point to start from, but I want these talents to recognize they need to come from a point of what are they interested in doing? That's the be prepared. Go mm -hmm. out. This is an opportunity to research businesses, organizations, other sectors that are aligned to the built environment, to the commercial interiors world that you could apply your skills to. And get back to your core focus. You're going to investigate things and say, that's not what I'm interested in. I thought it was curious and, and, and piqued my interest, but that's not my core focus. I'm going to get back to my core focus. So I would say be prepared when you come and engage a recruiter about who you are, what your focus is, and where you want to target your skills. Know your strengths. Those would be my three core messages. Okay. So those are all really good. And <clears throat> one of the things that I really, really liked that you said in that was research. Be, you, you said be prepared. And then you said what that means is research. Mm -hmm. Do your homework, right? Know who you're talking to. Know yeah. the recruiter that you're calling or the company that you're calling. Do the work and research yeah. it because we all know that research today is so easy. It's super easy to research the internet makes it just so simple to, to do that. And the other thing that you talked about again is like be open-minded to what's going on out there and that just because you've always been a furniture seller doesn't mean you always have to be a furniture seller. Right. Or well, just because you've always sold carpet doesn't mean you always have to sell carpet. So let's, let's hang out there for just a second. If you, if you don't mind, what kind of tips would you give people that, are trying to change roles or would be open to changing roles. So I'm a long time furniture manufacturer rep. Mm -hmm. and I want to go do something different because furniture doesn't resonate with me. It's false or whatever. And let's say they, they want to go work at a, at a flooring company. What kind of mm -hmm. tips would you give people in really changing um, verticals, if you will? I love this question oh, because great. I was this person. Mm, that's what person. you were, right? Yeah. Right. Where an op, an opportunity actually presented itself that I couldn't look away from. So we're talking about some people that maybe have had five years, 10 years, 15 years of experience, and now they're in transition. Mm -hmm. And so my thoughts to them, just in brief, would be first identify the types of roles that you want to focus on. There's that word again, identify the types of roles that you think feel right for you, that you think you're curious about, and then highlight your skills with those aligned roles and keep those skills, keep those differentiators in mind as you're moving your focus forward. And then the next would be uh, focus on what your pivotal accomplishments are, regardless of size. It could be something really small, um, 
a, a, a small win or a lesson learned, but know what those pivotal accomplishments are and then know your numbers. Uh, you know, I'm a fan of that show, The Prophet, mm -hmm. Marcus Limonis. Know your numbers. I talk to so many sales and business development people who look like they have a lot of great experience and I think they do, mm -hmm. but they don't know their numbers. So know your numbers and know what your individual differentiators are. Mm -hmm. Know what makes you unique. I was talking to um, a candidate yesterday who is graduating from college and she's very overwhelmed with the interviewing process. And I said, it's like mining for gold, except you are the gold. Mm -hmm. So know what your differentiators are because sure. what your unique <clears throat> skills, gifts, education, background is, is different from everyone else's. Yeah, that's, that, those are, so, those are great tips. And you're, you've got a common theme going through this conversation and it always comes back to the word focus. Yes. You know, common theme, focus and preparation, right? Focus. So you said focus, highlight your skills, look at your skill set that ties back to that job that might be in the carpet industry or wherever, lighting or wherever. That, so look at what skill sets you have and how it ties into that job. That's right. Uh, and then you didn't say sales accomplishments or things like that. You said pivotable, pivotal, pivotal accomplishments, the, the accomplishments that set you apart, the accomplishments that make you who you are. Right. right. And so recognize those and haul those out and know your numbers. And I assume I'm going to question what you mean by that is know your sales numbers, know what you did, what your growth was, where you've been, yes. know them. Like, you know, this year I grew 22%, yes. like, know them. Okay, great. Right. And then, New business, competitive wins. Yes. Sure. Know what those numbers are. Okay. And then you wrapped it up with probably what I think is probably one of the most important things in that whole conversation right there is your USP. And if you don't know what USP is, you need to go look it up, which stands for unique service proposition. What is your proposition that you're bringing? Why is this person that you're interviewing? Why do they want to talk to you? What's, what is it you're bringing to the table? You got to identify that. And there's tons of research you can do on that to do. So Melissa, I don't want to keep you for too very long. And I promise we keep these interviews short with great information. And you've done an awesome job with that so far, but I would like to dive into for just a minute, about there's a lot of layoffs there's not people aren't going to necessarily hire back as many people as they laid off when all this clears right and there presents a really unique opportunity for individuals with skill whether it's technical um <clears throat> excuse me or other type of skill but with skill and with knowledge and a little courage Mm -hmm. To step into the world of the gig economy, which you and I live in every day. That's kind yeah. of what we do mm -hmm. and become a 1099 contractor. So let's wrap up our chat today for a minute about what would you advice or tips would you give to somebody who would be considering or should consider going into the world of the gig economy? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a biggie for me, right? <laughs> okay. And thank you for, calling it like it is. You and I are gig uh, resources yep. to our clients. Mm -hmm. We're doing it. So that's, this is what my business does. This is what Built Hive does and what is, it's being built around mm -hmm. is this concept that we know that project-based work leveraging deployed expertise is going to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. And we know that over 57%, I think it's more than that now, but I'm going to use that number from Harvard Business Review. We mm -hmm. know that over 50% of employed workers today in the U.S. are contract work. And the people that you and I engage with hear the word gig. Maybe they've never heard the word gig. Maybe they think of a gig worker mm -hmm. as an Uber driver mm -hmm. or just somebody else that does that gig work. But now it's at our front step. Mm -hmm. And now the gig deployed work is here for our industry, which is typically sort of a late adopter, yep. sort of like the architecture and construction industry mm -hmm. are late adopters, mm -hmm. but now it's here. So the opportunity is for, uh, I'll just start with Build Hive in my business for designers, marketing professionals, project managers, mm -hmm. product developers mm -hmm. to work on a project deployed basis as a subject matter expert, a consultant, mm -hmm. And um, yes, it is a different way of thinking about how you work. Mm -hmm. It's a life change. It's a life decision. Yeah. And so why are people considering it? And 
the number one response to that is control. You have more control over your time. Yep. You have more control over your income. You have more control over how you work, when you work, who you work with. So mm -hmm. it's a tremendous opportunity right, right now. So, and, and the statistics are great. I even read, and I should have saved it and sent it to you, but I read, it was in the front part of an article. It was just this like a couple of days ago that by the year 2035, that over 70% of the U.S. workforce will be um, a gig economy workforce. 2035. Okay. Yeah. Which wow. is, it's 2020. So 2035, me and you're going to be retired by then, but there's, <laughs> it's, it'll be here sooner than later. But it's a, the point being is this is a growing component of our world. For sure. People taking control, living their freedoms and doing their things. So yeah. If you could boil it down into three steps, I want to be in the gig economy. I don't really know what to do. What are the three steps a person should do that thinks I want to be, I want to do this. What sure. should they do to get set up? Oh, that's a great question. I think that the first thing that they need to do is um, do an assessment on how they like to work Okay. and be really honest about it. And they need to also take um, an honest look at their financials in terms of how much work would I need uh, to achieve mm -hmm. in order to meet my current expectations mm -hmm. or exceed my current income? And uh, what type of deployed work am I willing to do? Do I only want to work in my, my home office? Am I willing to work at an office as a contract resource? Mm -hmm. Am I willing to travel some? So a blended position mm -hmm. where maybe you work from home, but maybe you go to a project site Mm -hmm. out of state once or twice a month. So really look at what that flexibility means to you and understand it before mm -hmm. you say, yes, this sounds really fun and exciting. I'm going to be a gig worker now. Mm -hmm. Have a sense of what that control and flexibility means to you. That, so that would be my guidance. Th those are great tips. And I'm going to recap them. Be sure you understand how you like to work. Um, and then assess your financials. Make sure that you understand that your financial contribution to your family, whatever that might be, mm -hmm. and kind of what you need. And then the type of work that you like to do, um, specifically the type of work you like to do, but also where you want to work. You want to, are you set up now to be in a home office? Can you do what you want to do in a home office? Or do you really thrive around being around people? Ask yourself a lot of questions. And then I'll end that with saying, also encourage all of you to get advice from your um, accountant, or a financial advisor or attorney before you step into this. Cause there are some things you need to do to be set up to receive 1099s. So just make sure you cover all your bases before you do it. And Melissa, it's a really, really important topic and I would love to keep talking about it, but I'd like to invite you actually to come on to my podcast, maybe sometime in the near future. And we just spend the whole 30, 45 minutes talking about gig and what Absolutely. it's to do and how much fun. We didn't even okay. get to talking about the client you know, the people that will be yeah. hiring you. This is true. Person. And edu how to educate them. And I think the gig person will mm -hmm. be a part of educating the hiring leader yeah. on how to leverage them. Yeah. So, so I want to thank you most for saying that. And what I want to wrap up with this is though it may seem tough right now and it may seem difficult right now, there is tremendous opportunity out there. You just got to do the work. You got to go do the research. You got to find it and you got to find what works best for you and don't be scared to pivot. Focus on me. Don't be afraid to pivot, guys. Don't be afraid to look at other options that might work best for you. Melissa, it's always a pleasure yeah. to see your smile and face. Thanks for joining me today. Thank we'll hook up on that podcast soon. And uh, hey, Melissa, if our people, people watching this want to reach out to you, what's the best way for them to connect with you? They should go to our website at builthive.io or they can email me at mcrimmons at builthive.io. All right, reach that out. sounds great. Thanks, Melissa, for joining me. I appreciate you. Thank you. All Have right. a good day.